Hello, beloved friends. Welcome again to our final week of this quarter. Our study has been in the Great Controversy theme. I know you've been blessed by it. My name is Dwayne Esmond, and I am so honored to have you with me all through this quarter. And I pray that you're sticking with us to the very end. This quarter ends this week, and it ends on a high note. The triumph of God's love. The triumph of God's love. I'm on the road this week. I'm traveling, but you know what? We can still get in the Word of God and we can still study our Sabbath school lesson, our adult Bible study guide, no matter where we are. Amen? Thank God that the Word also travels with us. The Bible says this. This is our memory scripture for this week. Revelation chapter 21, verses 3 and 4. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. God now is with men. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself, God himself, not from afar, God himself would be with them and be their God. Verse four says, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death. There shall be neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. Oh, what blessed hope, what wonderful encouragement that there is something coming that's better than what's happening right now. But before all of that comes, we are going to face a very serious time of trouble. If you are faithful to God, all those who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer some persecution, the Bible tells us, right? But between now and then, God's going to do some amazing things to save his people. So on Sunday's lesson, we're looking at hope in the time of trouble, hope in the time of trouble. And what's powerful about this lesson is it talks about the fact that there is a time of trouble. If you remember back in the book of Genesis, uh, 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 there, there is a portion of time there where a man by the name of Jacob finds himself running from his brother Esau. He's run from him for, for many years, but now Esau is coming and, and, and Jacob is afraid and he goes through a night of great terror. He's praying to God. He's searching for an answer. He needs to know that he's going to be delivered and everything is going to be all right. It's going to be like that. We are going to be concerned and challenged by this time that is coming. It is a time when God will say, as he does in Revelation chapter 22, verses 11 and 12, those who are filthy, filthy still. Those who are righteous, righteous still. The, the destiny of men and women will be set. But what, is, what will carry us through this period of time? What will help us to be able to make it through this period of time? There's something here that's very powerful. We will look at three, three, three verses, three passages of Scripture from the life of Jesus Christ. 1 John 3, uh, verses 1 to 3. Uh, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the children, the sons, and the daughters of God. Those who have lived faithfully in relationship, covenant relationship with Jesus Christ will be written in his book of life and need not fear the time of trouble. Not only that, but the Bible tells us in John chapter 8 and verse 29, and he who sent me is with me. This is Jesus now. He has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please my father. John chapter 14 and verse 30, Jesus says, the devil comes to me. He has nothing in me. He has no hold on me because I have always pleased the father. This is the secret of God's people through that time of trouble. They will have a relationship with him just like Jesus. One, one that the devil cannot tear down. One that will stand through the testing time until he comes. There's hope even in the time of trouble. Happy Monday, everybody. I hope you're doing well in the Lord. Uh, today's lesson is a blessed one. Yes, there is hope in the time of trouble, but beloved, there's hope in the second coming of Jesus that as we go through, there is hope in the soon return of our Savior. That's what we're studying about today. My name is Dwayne and I'm excited even as we come to the end of this quarter, because it's ending on a high note. Jesus is soon to come. The signs tell us that he's soon to come. In fact, Jesus says, in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, why would I go to all that trouble? To come here and die and, and ascend and minister for you and prepare a place for you and not come back and get you. I'm preparing a place for you that where I am, there you may be also, and we shall forever be with the Lord there. What an awesome, awesome promise. What an awesome blessing. What an awesome note of hope in the soon return of Jesus. 
The Bible says this in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 25, verses 8 and 9. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off their faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he remove. All the reproach to his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord hath spoken it. Oh, beloved of God, it is a wonderful thing to know that Jesus and his return is soon and that that return will usher in a time when you and I will be forever with God. Listen to what uh, the lesson says today. We have what's called the blessed hope, the blessed hope. Revelation chapter 6, verses 15 to 17, Isaiah 25, 8, 9, which I just read, all remind us that there is coming a time when God will address the wicked. And he will remove them from the from the field of play, you might say. There is coming a time, beloved, when the soon return of Jesus will usher in our peace, will usher in our relationship face to face with Jesus Christ. What's powerful about this scripture is what the Bible tells us at the end of time is not only will Jesus come, he's coming for people who actually know him and people who want to be in relationship with him. Ellen White says this. <coughs> The cross of Christ, the cross of Christ will be the science and the song of the redeemed through all eternity. The cross of Christ will be our science and our song. In Christ glorified, they will behold Christ crucified. That the maker of all worlds, the arbiter of all destinies, should lay aside his glory and humiliate himself. From, for, from love to man will ever excite the wonder and adoration of the universe. When we look at that redeemed Savior, we will see the one, yes, glorified, but the one who paid the price for us, the one who died for us, the one who wagered everything so that we can be where he is. Beloved, today as we study, let's remember that we are in the very toenails of time, that the coming of Jesus is soon, and that ought to fill our hearts with hope. May God bless you. Hello, my beloved Christian friends. We are in Tuesday's lesson today. My name is Dwayne. It's happy Tuesday. It's happy Tuesday to you. And I hope that you are well in the Lord. We're looking at the millennium on earth today. The millennium on earth today. Now, what does the Bible say about that? Let's go to Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 to 3, and we'll see it. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. So picture that angel now, uh, 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 a key in his hand and, and, and a great chain, all right? And he laid hold on the dragon. Who's the dragon? You should know the dragon by now. We're talking about Satan. He laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a period of a thousand years. There it is, the millennium, a thousand years. Verse three, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed for a little season of time. So the Bible says symbolically now, and Satan is not going to be chained. It's a symbol. It's a, it's, it's a symbol of what's going to happen to him. It's symbolic uh, that, that God is going to imprison him in the very place that he destroyed. The earth is, is absolutely destroyed. The second coming of Jesus, the Bible says, will have destroyed everything. Don't take my word for it. Let's go, let's go to the word of God again. Jeremiah chapter 25 and verse 33. Jeremiah 25, 33 says this. Those slain by the Lord on that day will be from one end of the earth to the other. The brightness of the coming of Jesus. The destruction of the planet. Those slain by the Lord on that day will be from one end of the earth to the other. They will not be lamented, gathered, or buried. They will be like dung on the face of the ground. It, it's going to be, beloved, a hellscape down here, unlike anything that any movie could dream up that you have ever seen before. You have no business being down here at that period of time. You should be in the first resurrection, flying out of here with Jesus Christ, gone when he comes. We have no business being down here with the enemy. And and the, in fact, this this abyss, this word abyss, uh, is is a is a 
place, a, a bottomless place. It's talking about not that the devil is going to be put in some chasm down in some, some place. The world will become form and voidless again, almost like it was at creation. Satan will have so destroyed this planet and the brightness of Jesus will have done so much damage to it that it will look like something we have never seen before. And the enemy of souls will be imprisoned on this planet for a period of a thousand years. He won't be able to, to, to mislead anyone. He won't be able to deceive anyone. He will be imprisoned here while God and the people of God fly out of here and look at the books of record. We'll talk about that this week too. We'll be examining lives and examining why God saved some and why God didn't save others. But for that period of time, Satan is in chains. And I, for one, can't wait because he has sure done a number on me. I can't wait to see God do a number on him. All right, family of God, we're in Wednesday today. My name is Dwayne. We're in Wednesday today. Yesterday, if you remember, we ended with uh, uh, Satan chained, right? The millennium on earth. That's what we talked about yesterday. The enemy chained among the destruction, among all the devastation that he has done with no one to tempt. He's just down here with his, with his fallen angels and they're having a horrific time in the place where he has done so much destruction and caused so much pain and suffering. Well, there's also something happening in heaven. The, the millennium in heaven is not like the millennium on earth. There's judgment happening. Let's look at the Bible again. Revelation uh, 20 now. Let's look at verse 4. Verse 4. And I saw thrones, and I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast. Come on, talk to me. I pray that you know you are in this number. Those who have not worshipped the beast have not received his mark. Here we go. The Bible says, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. All right, listen to this. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand year period is finished. This is the first resurrection. So those who are in heaven in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4 are those who came up in the first resurrection. And they are judging all the righteous. They're judging all the dead with God. They're, they're asking questions. They're inquiring, Lord, why were some saved? Why were not others saved? How did you work out this situation and that situation? God goes through the record and shows us in technicolor, in, in, in high def. He shows us exactly why he did what he did and why some were saved and others were lost. At the end of the, that period of time, God's people will say that his ways were just and his ways were true and that he was fair. They will see that God was indeed a fair and honest judge. Listen to verse, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in this first resurrection. Amen. On such the second death hath absolutely no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So we're up there a thousand years, but the word doesn't stop there. Verse seven, Revelation 20 and verse seven. And when the thousand years are, in, are over, when it's finished, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison for a short period of time. Remember the Bible says that early in the book of, uh, in the first three verses of Revelation 20, that he will, he will indeed be loose for a period of time. At this, at this, this, this end of the thousand year period, the dead, the wicked, dead rise and Satan brings them into a mighty army, Gog and Magog. That is the fallen enemy, Satan, and all his imps and all his followers, all of them come together to take the holy city, which is descending out of heaven. Satan and his host will see the people of God in that beautiful city who have been with God now for an entire thousand year period of time. And they will attempt to take the holy city and they will not be successful. Amen. Amen. They will not be successful. At that time, they will be destroyed forever. That's why the Bible says here in the book of Revelation chapter 21, blessed are those who have part in the first resurrection. You, don't, you really don't want to be in this part of the resurrection. You don't want to be in this second resurrection only to die this horrific death. Final end after all the judgment. You want to be in the first resurrection. You want to be in that holy city. May God bless you as you study today. Dear family of God, um, welcome to Thursday's study. And I want to tell you this week has been sobering, but probably no more sobering than today's study. 
Um, this is one of those studies that is serious. It is important. It is critical. And it really should not be taken lightly. Really ask God's Holy Spirit to direct and guide and touch your heart, even as you read and study this day. My name is Dwayne, and today our study is two eternities. We've been talking about hope, the blessed hope in this time of trouble and the triumph of God's love at the end of time. Uh, but, but as we near the very end, the Bible tells us here in Revelation chapter 20, uh, verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which was the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to his works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. God is saying in no uncertain terms that everything living, every man, woman, boy, girl, every human being will be judged. And either your name is in the book of life or it's not. And if we are not written in that book, if we have not chosen Jesus Christ, if we have not worshipped him faithfully, if we have not uh, uh, cast our allegiance and our loyalty with God, then we will be on the side of the enemy. And the Bible says at that time that Satan and his host will rise up as we learned yesterday and attempt to take the city of God but then fire will come from that city and will devour all men all women all human beings will be destroyed listen to Ellen White <laughs> writing here great controversy page 666 and 668 as soon as the books of record are open and the eye of Jesus looks upon the wicked they are conscious of every sin which they have ever committed they see just where their feet diverge from the path of purity and holiness, just how far pride and rebellion have carried them in the violation of God's law. The seductive temptations which they encouraged by indulgence in sin, the blessings perverted, the messengers of God despised, the warnings rejected, the wave of mercy, the waves of mercy beaten back by the stubborn, unrepentant heart, all appear as if written in letters of fire. The whole wicked world stands arraigned at the bar of God on the, on the charge of high treason against the government of heaven. They have none to plead their cause. They are without excuse and the sentence of eternal death is pronounced against them. It's a fearful scene. It is a scene none of us should be a part of. Today is the day of God's salvation. And in this day, if we hear his voice, let us not harden our hearts. For Jesus is coming, and so is the judgment. Well, dear family of God, we have come to the very end now of our study for this week. Have you been blessed? I pray that you have been encouraged. This has been a powerful quarter of study. Um, the great controversy theme is the meta narrative. It's the big picture a narrative of a story of what is going on on this planet. The things we see happening are not just happening by chance. There is a devil on this planet. There are demonic forces at work on this planet, but thank God Jesus is on this planet. The Holy Spirit is on this planet, and we need not fear anything that is happening to us if we put on the full armor of God that we may be able to stand in the latter day. Well, we've learned this week that there is hope even in the time of trouble. There will be a time of trouble such as never was, but those who have hid their lives with Christ in God, those, uh, like J Jesus said in John 14, 30, to whom the devil comes and hath nothing, has no pull on them, can do nothing with them. Those who have written their names in the Lamb's book of life because they have been faithful to God day by day, moment by moment, 
We need not fear that time of trouble because we've got hope in Jesus Christ. We've learned this week, beloved, that there is such a thing as the second coming of Jesus, that it appears every 25 verses in the New Testament. We have hope in the soon return of Jesus. Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Jesus says, Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Hey, believe also in me. I'm not going away to do all that, prepare all that for you and not come back. I'm coming back to get you. We've got the hope of the resurrection. We know that there will be a millennium period of time on this earth when the enemy will be bound. Revelation chapter 20, 1 to 3, when Satan will be bound on this planet that he destroyed and disfigured. He and his imps chained down here for a period of a thousand years. When they can't deceive anyone and can't mess with nobody, they have to deal with themselves and what they have done. But then the Bible tells us in heaven during that same millennium, there will be a judgment happening. We will be looking, the righteous saved up there with God, will be looking at the books of record and seeing why some were saved and some were not. God will justify himself. Sometimes we don't understand why God does what he does. But at that period of time, beloved, he will explain himself and make himself very clear. So much so that our knees will buckle and we will declare that just and true are his ways, that he is a righteous God. And he is a righteous judge. And we love him. Beloved, the Bible tells us that there are only two eternities. That in that moment of judgment, the books will be opened. And the righteous, those written in the Lamb's book of life, those whose robes have been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, they will be saved. But those who have made constant decisions against God, those who have chosen sin instead of God, their fate will be sealed. Fire! will come out from the king, from the, 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 the new Jerusalem and destroy them in the lake of fire. We have no business being there. It was created for Satan and his imps and his angels, Satan and his fallen demonic forces. That's who that fire is for. It's really not even for us. So let's make our calling and election sure, beloved, that we might see Jesus when he comes. Next quarter, next quarter, come join me next quarter. We are in the book of Mark. We're going to study the book of Mark, the gospel of Mark, the immediacy of God's power in our lives. That's what we're going to be talking about. Immediately. That word, that's the key word in the book of Mark. We're going to see Jesus at work. Come on back next quarter. Let's talk to Jesus. Let's stay with Jesus. Let's walk with Jesus until he comes. Amen.